Amen. Well, happy, sa happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. On this beautiful, rainy spring afternoon, thank God for the rain. Amen. Without the rain, you wouldn't eat, and everybody likes to eat, so we just say praise the Lord for the rain. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his presence with us today. Oh. I was saying that was a noise I have not heard, but uh, <laughs> amen, amen. We thank God. We thank God for those who could brave the, the weather to get here today. We thank God for those who are joining us on the broadcast and the conference line this morning. For this is the day God asks us to assemble with one another, amen? And we have to assemble as best way we can. We either by phone, by broadcast, by human flesh, and it's always best to come. And we thank God for the opportunity. So we would all join together now for a word of prayer before we open up God's word so we may be directed by God's spirit. So let's join together this morning for a word of prayer. Most kind, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, once again, in the name of Jesus, we come. We come before your throne of mercy and grace, your throne of judgment, Lord, saying thank you. Thank you for the week that is past. Thank you for this, your most holy day. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. And as at this time, we ask that that spirit would be our teacher to lead and guide us in all truth. Lord, so we may understand your word, Father, that we may share it with others. Father, we ask that you be with those all over the world who are bowed down now, who are honoring you, Lord, as the only true and the living God. We ask that you would bless them, Lord. Bless them in their church services, Lord. Bless them in their Bible studies. Bless them, Father, in a way that they may hear from you today, that their lives may be changed. And, Father, we ask that you would have compassion on those who are sick, those who find themselves in hospital rooms today, those who, Lord, are suffering not just physical ailments, but also spiritual ailments. We ask that you send your messengers and your angels to help in their time of need. Remember those under persecution this morning for your name's sake. We ask that you would provide for them the strength to endure. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord again today. For it is this day that he has given us. One more day. We were studying yesterday morning a, a, a prayer that... Today is the day. It's not tomorrow. You can't fix yesterday. Today is when God asks us not to harden our heart. He said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. And we ask God to help all of us hear his voice today. For if we don't hear his voice, you're not guaranteed you're going to get another opportunity. And that's why it, it, it saddens us when other things get in the way, if that makes sense. Because God has blessed us with the ability to come together to hear his word, to follow his truth. There are countless millions of people who would love to hear what God would have to say to them today, but they don't have that opportunity. They are stuck in places that are it's just amazing. They're stuck in places that don't even let you mention the name Jesus, and they long to see Jesus. But what happened? What happens? They don't. They don't get the opportunity. And we I got kind of spoiled, haven't we? A little spoiled that God has blessed us so much that we can hear from him at any time that we want to hear from him, and especially each and every week to come together in righteousness and in truth. And we ask God to help us today. Let's go, if we would, to the book of Esther this morning. Because some things have been going on in this world, on this, in this country, we should say, Things have been going on that we might have missed, but we want to share with you something. That, that there are some decrees that have been happening and no one seems to pay attention to. Decrees that affect your life, your children's lives. These decrees come from the government and, 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 and come from, from church uh, doctrine and they come with the same message. This is to obey us in spite of it all. And so what we want to understand today is that God says there will always be these decrees. What you're going to do about them is left up to you. And we want to read today about some decrees that were made. Because we need to start, if we haven't started, and we were, we were sharing this with the brother this morning, 
It's not for us to set the time when it's too late for you. Only God knows that. But we have been around this tree a long time. And God says, look, he says, when are you going to forge this relationship with me? When are you going to have a relationship with me that supersedes every other relationship that you have on this earth? Because if you don't have this relationship, when the decrees go forth and the heat gets turned up, you will wither. And I want to uh, uh, offer this to you this morning. If you haven't been faithful in the small things, in the small faith lessons, in the small obedient lessons. If you have not been faithful and you've had the opportunity to be faithful, when the big opportunities to exercise faith come, you will lose. You will not have the supernatural uh, 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 relationship that it takes to overcome the supernatural attack. You will not have it. It will be impossible. So I know we like to believe that we're going to be strong, that when the big thing goes down or if, if the man says this and, you know, you got to take a number and we're going to say, no, we're going to stand for Christ. You will not stand for Christ. So take that, out of, that lie out of your mind. If you have not walked with Christ, you will not stand with Christ. When they tell you you have to do this and you say, well, God doesn't want us to do that, and you have not tried God before, you will not try him then. It will not be in you. So please, let's get that lie out of the way first this morning. You will, you've been, we've been riding on that lie for a long time. Well, I know when it happens, I'll be ready. But you haven't been ready every day of your life. You haven't allowed him to form that relationship with you that you'll be able to overcome and will fall. And we'll be worse than those who never heard because we had the opportunity and we didn't do so, you know, when, when, when God comes to, to give out the punishment, who do you think is going to get punished more? Those who had the opportunity but decided not to. Amen? Amen. So there's a decree that went forth. We're going to read about this in the book of Esther, if you would, this morning. Let's turn to the book of Esther, chapter 3. And, and we're going to look at something. Because the powers that be, their job is to make decrees. And if you'll notice something about these four decrees that we're going to read about this morning, they all have to do with the same subject. And we're going to wait till we finish in order to bring that up. But in, in Esther chapter 3 this morning, let's begin, if we would, in verse 8. Now, we know the relation, we know the history about this. You know, uh, uh, there was a guy named Haman, right? Yes. Egomaniac. He wanted everybody to bow down and praise him. And there was this guy named Mordecai the Jew, right? He, he would not do that because he had been taught from ways back, you don't bow down to a man like that. You don't bow down to man. And so he had this, Haman had this problem with Mordecai. So he, he, he came up with a, with a scheme on how to get back at Mordecai. Now let's look on verse 8. <clears throat> and Haman said to King Azarias, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the providence of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's, what, profit to suffer them or to allow them to exist. Now, does this sound familiar? Mm -hmm. yes. Think about the laws that are in place in this country and the laws that God has put in place with his people. This sounds just like us. And there's going to be a Haman in the land, isn't there? Now let's keep, let, let's keep going. Verse 9 says, If it please the king, let it be written that they may be what? Destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business. To do what? To bring it into the king's treasures. He said, let's set this thing up that when we... Uh, uh, pay some people to make sure they snitch on each other and, play, and bring them in and, and we're going to put all their goods and stuff where? In the king's treasure house. And the king took the ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of who? Hamadatha, the Agrigite, the Jew's enemy. <laughs> and the king said unto Haman, the silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Now, so the decree, the guy came in, convinced the king that these people who don't keep the law need to be destroyed. 
And the king just went along with it. He said, well, whatever you find yourself to do, just go ahead and do it. He's the enemy of God. He's the enemy of God's people. Not just him, but he came from the enemy. His family was the enemy of God, right? Verse 12. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, and there was written according to all Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language in the name of King Azarias, and who? Was it written and sealed with the king's ring? Now look at this. Everybody. Now this was a big providence. This was a big a realm that this king reigned over because they had different languages, different people. He had make sure it's written in every language, posted on every television show, posted everywhere people would see it, that this was the rule. Now look at this. Well, yeah, really. They had sitcoms designed to make sure you knew this. They made sure that those who didn't follow or who had followed a strange set of rules would be persecuted, would be killed. Verse 13, it says, And the letters were sent to the post and to all the king's province to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for prey. Now, can you imagine if you were at home tonight and then there was a news bulletin, all those who keep the Sabbath on the 13th day of the 12th month, you will be caused to perish, as they say. And then you'll say, well, surely not the children. No, the little children, everybody. Now, let me ask, that's a decree from the powers that be. You know what's going to be said? Well, God said, you know, we ought to respect the powers that be now. So we got, we got to go on and do, you know, do what they say. You know, obey the rules, you got to rule over you now. You know, that's what the books say. And we'll start pulling out this big bag of compromise. <laughs> Boom, and put it right on top of our Bible to make sure that we wouldn't be a Jew by the time that, that day got there. Amen? I know we don't want to say that, but amen? amen? This is a decree that is real, people. It was real then, and it's real now. Verse 14, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace, and the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was what? They were perplexed. They said, what is going on here? What is going to happen? And this was real, people. And I need you all to understand something. It's real right now. That's one decree that went forth. And what was it about? Worship. Let's go to another decree, because we're going to come back and find out the solution to these things on how we can, can, can get delivered from these things. But we're going to look at Daniel chapter 3, another one. So we found out in Esther that it went forth that anybody who worshipped something else besides what the powers that be had established to be worshipped, they will be killed. That was way back when, in Esther's day. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. We're familiar with this one, aren't we? Daniel chapter 3, let's go to, let's start at verse 3. We won't keep you long today. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, and we'll start at verse 3. Same thing happened. There was a problem with people who kept God's law. There was a problem with people who would not compromise. There was a problem with people who wanted, who loved God more than they loved anything else, and somebody came by and didn't like that. And so they fooled the king into passing a command a, about worship. Now look at this. In verse 3 of 3 of Daniel, it says, Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the providence were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, king, the king, had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. See, the law had just been passed that when you hear music, you bow down to this image, right? It was about worship. You're going to bow down. 
Now, who was there? Everybody. All the powers that be. You had the governors and the sheriff. Everybody was there. Now, everybody was there. Now think about that. You gonna sit there and act like you're not gonna participate. How do you think that's going to turn out? That's a decree, right? Now, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's keep going. Verse 4 said, Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and who? Languages. That, uh, that at the time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbuff, the psalter, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Now, it says, And when... And whosoever faileth, falleth, I'm sorry, not down and worshiped, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the music, I mean, the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sockpit, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages did what? Fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Now, look at this. Look at this. What did he say? He said, the powers that be passed the decree that if you don't bow down when you hear the noise, when you hear the message, when you hear the music, you're going to be killed. Was that a true decree? It was, wasn't it? Now just think, we got two decrees so far that end in death if you don't obey. Can you imagine what's going to happen? Do you think this has just happened in Esther's day? Do you think it just happened in Daniel's day? Let's go find another decree that was set forth in Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. See, we're going to come back and see these things. This is nothing new. That's what we're saying to you today. If you have not been faithful in the small test, there's no way you're going to pass this test. You are not going to pass. If the man came and said, give up Jesus, I'm going to kill you and your whole family, we'd be the Jesus giving up people that you ever seen? Well, you know, Lord didn't really mean that. that was See, we've been playing long enough. See, this what happens when the, this kind of decree comes, it lets you see who you are. Adversity. Adversity does one thing. It reveals character. It doesn't build character. It shows you what you are. It's too late to get in shape in the game, isn't it? Yeah, hey, when, when, the, when the tip goes up, you, if you're not in shape, it's going to show, isn't it? You're a boxer in the ring, and you hadn't been training. Yeah, ding, ding, see what happens. This is what this is about. We're, we're trying to skip training, and we're going to be in trouble. Let's keep going to Matthew chapter 2. There was another decree. It's all about worship, people. I hate to, to, to keep putting that in your face, but somebody has to. Matthew chapter 2, let's start at verse 7. Now, we know this is what you, you hear about the wise men that came uh, to, to worship Christ, right? And, and to give the gifts. And, 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 and they, the rumor was around that there was a new king born in Egypt, I mean, in, 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 in Jerusalem. And in verse 7, Herod, who's the Roman guy, right? He said, then Herod went... He had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. See, Herod was getting a little nervous because everybody said this is a new king. And Rome can't have a king inside of Rome. And, he, and, he and, and they knew the prophecy. And the prophecy said, here it is. And, they, and the wise men were saying, look, man, we saw this thing a couple of years ago, and we knew the prophecy, so we started to walk. And, we started, and we're glad we're here. We found it. And Herod was trying to be slick. And what did he do? He said, look, y'all, just, just tell me about this thing. And, and, and in verse 8, uh, we're still in, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 2. In verse 8, it says, um, and the, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And we, when ye have found him, bring me word again, and I may come and worship him also. Was Herod telling the truth? What was Herod doing? He was lying. This was, this was what, called, what we call, uh, um, what they do today, they make you uh, snitch on your neighbor. What do they call that? Neighborhood watch? 
or whatever they call it. <laughs> this no, not neighborhood watch. Right? Yeah. Neighborhood watch is a pretty good thing. It, 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 they got this program. The Nazis used to do this. They used to used to get paid to rat people out. What do they call it? Paid some for cash. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, it's basically a spy program that your neighbor spies on you, and you get paid if you do something funny, and you they turn you in. Well, this is what was going on here. Oh yes, please go inquire diligently where the child is, and I want to come worship him too. Now watch what this is where the man's heart was. Now we're gonna we, let's go down to sixteen. We're in Matthew chapter two, verse sixteen says, and then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked, because guess what, the wise men weren't called wise men because they weren't wise. <laughs> <laughs> they peeped him and said, oh, I see what this is, because they came for a purpose. They came to worship the King of Kings. And Herod was not the king of kings. And when someone was trying to go against the king of kings, the wise men inquired and said, Lord, really? And the Lord had told them, what? Go another way. And God is so good, isn't he? Boy, when we start listening to him, he tells us which way to go. In verse 16, he says, and, and then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Be careful what you say to people. You know, everybody, don't, everybody who say they're interested in Jesus, not interested. Be careful. Be very careful. Because the wise men that share with him is, hey, two years. And so what Herod did is took that as, a, as, the, as the starting point, and he killed all the children. And this was prophesied earlier in verse 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted. Why? Because they are not. What a horrible, horrible time that was. Can you imagine someone killing your two-year-old? That's horrible, isn't it? But this was a decree that went forth, and they exercised the decree. And, and Jesus, we're going we're gonna to find out what happened to Jesus. He was under two, wasn't he? But God did something for him. Now, let's go to one more, we're gonna, one more decree, then we're going to go back to these decrees and find out how they got delivered and how we're going to have to be delivered. But there's a decree that's staring us in the face right now. Revelation chapter 13. If you don't believe it, oh, just open your eyes and turn off the stupid stuff on TV and try to find out what's really going on in this world. Most of us still believe that, that Boston was an accident. Most of us still believe that. Most of us still believe that school shootings are accidents. Most of us still believe that. Why? Because we got our head in prime time television and we're not paying attention to what's really going on. And when these decrees are already, some have already passed, and some are coming, we're going to be sitting there and, hit, <coughs> and, and be blindsided, and we won't have the faith to stand for God. We won't. I know that. Oh, yeah, we will. No, you won't. If you hadn't done the small, you can't do the big. You can't. Revelation chapter 13. There's another decree staring us in the face. How long have we been hearing this one? And what have we done about it? Revelation chapter 13. And we'll begin by the grace of God in verse 12. Now we know the history here, don't we? We had a beast that came and took over. He received a deadly wound, but the deadly wound was healed. Amen? Now there's another beast coming to make everybody worship the first beast. Now we're going to look at this decree that is being made by this beast and see if it sounds like the beast, I mean, uh, sounds like the decree, we, the first three decrees that we read. And we're starting at verse 12 in Revelation 13. He said, he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes all, I mean, causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. See, here we go again. It's about the worship, right? So let's keep reading. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by their means of those miracles which we had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should, what? Make an image to the beast which had the deadly wound but was healed. 
And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, what? That as many as would not worship the image of the beast, what's the decree? Should be killed. Nothing new, right? This has happened before. That's why God gave us this book. So we can see what happened, how to get out of what happened, and how to position ourselves and when it happens. He didn't say it wasn't going to happen, did he? See, we're out here praying that Babylon won't fall. We're out here praying like, oh, Lord, don't let the thing go down. Don't, don't, don't let them close the cities. God said, it's going to happen. I said it. It's written. And we're messing around here like it's not true. We're so caught up in the day-to-day, -day, we forget eternity. So these decrees are made forth, and all of them had to do with worship and death. All right? We got that? We read these four decrees. Did you see worship? Yes. Did you see the decree from man, from, from the powers that be, that said death? Amen? Amen. All right. Now, we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start again. Let's go back to Esther. Let's go back to Esther. And we're going to see what happened. And this is why we discuss what to do and who is going to be able to do it. Now, see, every person we're going to read about had a previously rela previous relationship with Christ. They had exercised this relationship with Christ. They had formed the relationship with Christ. They had obeyed Christ and trusted Christ and moved upon the things Christ told them to move on before the thing went down. We're in trouble. Those who have had the opportunity and have turned their backs on the living God are in trouble today. See, not that God can't deliver. It's that you won't ask him to because you hadn't trusted him. When time of trouble, you're going to go to what you trust in. Amen? Amen. If it's a gun, guess where you're going? If it's, if it's, if it's, if it's, what, I don't know what else you trust in. Your job, you go to it. But God says, you hadn't trusted me, so you're not going to ask me. Because when I gave you the opportunity to walk with me in the baby steps, you said no. And now you're going to think you're going to jump up here. Remember the scripture about the footman? He said, if, you, if the footmen weary you, how are you going to run with the horses? And now we're about to move over into the swelling of the Jordan times, and we haven't even walked with God yet. And we call ourselves Christians. Esther chapter 4. Anybody know why somebody would call themselves a Christians and not follow Christ? We ought to come up with another name. Anybody got another name for people? Wannabes. <laughs> Bunch of wannabes out here. <laughs> Esther chapter 4. Now, we know what happened in Esther. The decree went forth that everybody who, did, who was a Jew on this day was going to be killed. It wasn't going to be a long campaign. It was going to be on this day, we're killing everything that's a Jew, taking everything the Jew has and bringing it to the king. Amen? That's what we read this morning. Now let's go to Esther chapter 4. Let's start at verse 1. When Mordecai, who was who, what? Who was he? What was, his, what was his, 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 his religion? He was a Jew. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai did something that was a bit unusual, but it should have made a whole lot of sense to those who had walked with God previously, who had studied God's method previously. He said Mordecai rent his clothes and put on what? sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice with a what? And a bitter, with a bitter cry. Amen? And came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and what? Fasting. And what? Weeping. And wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Why did these people lay in sackcloth and ashes? They knew the method. 
Why did they fast? They knew the method. Why did they pray? They had experienced the method of how to get God's attention. Amen? Amen. Because they did it in the smaller things. See, they didn't, it wasn't time to learn the method at this point. He said, this faith come not by what? Fasting and praying. It wasn't time to learn how to fast and pray when it's time to fast and pray, is it? And Mordecai understood that, and all the elders of Israel understood that. All the Jews who had been with God and had tested God, they knew what to do. And they said, Lord, help us. And they got into the position they had gotten in previously. That's why it worked. There wasn't no conference call on this one. What did God do to them? What did God do for them? They said what? They fasted and they prayed. Did it work? Did it work? Yes. It worked so well that the people who were persecuting them, they got persecuted, didn't they? Wasn't that great? I mean, I'm sorry, it was wonderful. <laughs> it was a blessing because they put themselves in position. Let's go to verse 13. We're going to keep reading about this. They said, Lord, help us. And they knew where to be. You know, they knew where to go. They knew how to get there. Because they had done it before. When the big decree comes forth, people, if you hadn't been there, you're not going to make it. You won't know what to do. You won't know what clothes to put on. You won't know what time it is. Christ said, Jew, he said, look, you all didn't know the time of your visitation. That's going on right now. See, all this stuff happened. We don't even know what happened. I bet we know who won last night. But we don't know what happened, do we? We don't know that the decree went forth that all people in America shall now be marked and, and counted for. We don't know that, do we? Oh, I, I wasn't paying attention. I thought it was a health care bill. <laughs> Really? See, because we don't read anymore. We got, we, got, we got a decree that went forth and said, look, that all of us are going to have to be on state-sponsored what? Health insurance. And you know, we, we won't know how to charge you unless we confiscate all your financial records. Anybody read that? I mean, it was in like big people paper. You know, you had to go into underground. It was like in the big paper paper. Then they said, well, we're going to have to kind of keep up with you. And eventually we're going to do something that, that we've been talking about doing for 35 years. We just didn't have the technology to do it. We're just going to mark you so we can keep up with you, you know, just in case you get sick in the hospital or you're in a strange city and they don't know your records. Oh, we just scan you and you'll be just fine. If it wasn't for grace, we'd be in trouble. Because how many are ready right now for that? I mean, to stand and say, no, we shall not be marked. <laughs> how many are ready for that? We can't stop eating Doritos. <laughs> we know that's, gonna, that's killing us. How are we going to stand between somebody that says, I'm throwing you in prison in Alaska for the rest of your natural life? And we're not telling anybody where we took you. It's amazing to see the rest of the world watch us sleep. You know, those who have been through this before, they're like, man, they need to wake up because that happened over here and it ain't good. <laughs> but what? We weren't ready in the small things. We weren't faithful in the small things. See, what you're dealing with, people, isn't governments. You're dealing with supernatural forces that are fighting over your soul. And we, have, and we decided not to use the supernatural who has offered himself to us. That power that has offered himself, he, hey, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Remember that guy? We decided to follow someone else who was going to turn on us and make these decrees. But verse 13 of Esther, of chapter, what, 4 of Esther was still? Verse 13 says, Then Mordecai commanded 
to answer Esther. Esther was a queen, right? For those who don't know, Esther was a queen in this place. And she was a Jew, though. Now, she said, Esther, think not thyself that thou shall be, y'all escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. And Mordecai was trying to tell her, just because you queen, you're not getting out away from this. The decree says all, didn't it? So just because you have a good job, or just because you're close to the man, or your friend is, you know, your friend is a sheriff. <laughs> when the decree goes down, they're going to they gonna call you by your first name because they know you. You got to come on. <laughs> See, because some of y'all have been talking about Jesus. Some of you. In a strange kind of way. Not that Jesus that you hear from, from the, the big churches. You know, the, ah, the, that, not that Jesus. That Jesus that's in real in your life every day. You've been trying to tell people at work, you know, my God said this, and he helped me this way. And, you know, don't, that's how you start getting your reputation. Who do you think they're going to come get first? And this is not for fear, people. See, if you're like Daniel, Daniel wasn't afraid. Why? Daniel knew they were coming. Esther knew they were coming. But they had have a relationship with God that was so strong it didn't matter. And what happened here? When we talk about getting in position, verse 15 said, then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Now look at the position Esther got in. Go gather together all who? All the Jews. All the Jews. This sounds like, uh, 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 get, let's, let's keep going. The, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and do what? Fast. Fast ye for who? Me. Oh, come on now. Intercessory? Fasting? You can do that? Because we'll fast for ourselves, won't we? Oh, Lord, I need some help. Uh, you told me to. What about fasting for somebody else? We know we do that often. Somebody be going through something and say, we, we, we just need to, we need to fast for them. We need to pray for them. Because we need some miracles to come. Esther got into the miracle receiving position because she knew him. She knew God. She trusted God. And when things get tight, you will do what you believe. And Esther believed in God. He said, he said and, 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 and Sushan, and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also, and my handmaid will fast also, likewise. And so will who? So will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. And she made this declaration that we all have to make. If I what? Perish, I perish. See, you know why? Because she trusted in God. She said, if I perish with God, it's still fine. I said, hey, man, I'm with God. I'm not going to compromise what God told me to do just because you, you say I'm going to stab you in the neck. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stand firm, and, and I trust him. Did Esther perish? No. She died a good old age somewhere, didn't she? You know, we don't even know what happened to her. But she didn't die that day, and she didn't die because of this. Because she got in the position of receiving the miracles. We don't even know where that is. Next, remember the decree we had in Daniel chapter 3? Come on, let's go back to Daniel chapter 3. We're going to see... This relationship, this relationship we need to form right now, not tomorrow, not next week, right now, because that decree might hit you square in the forehead this evening. Oh, I, I do look forward, Sister Jerry, when people hear the decree, we're going to have to pull chairs from the back, because they're going to say, what are we going to do? What we need to do? No, we in church now. You know, that happened once before. About 6,000 years ago, there was a man named Noah. For 120 years, he tried to convince people that the judgment of God was coming. Every day as he hammered, and, and, and his sons and all the people who believed with him, they hammered on that great big ark, and they hammered. And, 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 and then what something happened, 
when God started moving on the animals to move into the ark, we would think that would kind of get our attention, wouldn't it? That's odd. And then uh, as they were moving, Noah was saying, here it comes, y'all. Come on, repent and believe the gospel. Then all the animals got on the boat. And see, these people haven't trusted in God, so they don't know what position to, to be in. The position was going to be inside the ark, but they didn't know that because they had never tried him before. And then all of a sudden, this great big door closed by no man's hand. The angels closed that door and sealed that door. Then you would think there'd be some repent going on. But it didn't rain that day. Matter of fact, it took a few days before it rained. And by the time it rained, they had been out there just saying, see, no, you, you, you didn't know what you're talking about until that first raindrop hit them in the head. Guess what? Too late. And I don't want that to be our experience. That is too late. Because you're going to loathe your soul because you had the chance. God pleaded with you. He pleaded with them 120 years. How long has God pleaded with you? To get in position to receive the miracle. It's not like he said get in the position to receive, you know, some junk. He said, I'm going to deliver you in my way. Stand here and see the salvation of God. But we won't, because we're too busy believing in the image and his, the beast and all them other people. Now go to Daniel chapter 3. We're not fussing this morning, amen? amen. We're pleading. Because you don't understand where we are today. You know what's interesting? God still loves us. He wouldn't be talking to us, would he? He wouldn't be trying to help us, would he? He'd be, he'd say, Ephraim, leave him alone. He's left to his idols. Thank God he hadn't made that declaration, amen? amen? You are here for a reason, to hear this. Now what you do with it is up to you. There are many who are not here, who need to hear it. Who has the advantage? Amen. In Daniel 3, now we know what happened in Daniel 3, right? They, they, they said, look, anybody who doesn't bow down to this music, <laughs> ah, we're not going to skip over that either. Bow down to the music. Music very important in worship, isn't it? Yes. Why do you think you got so many radio stations? Why do you think you can download stuff from 1952 in an instant on your, on your uh, iPods, your MP3s or whatever they are? Music's important to worship. You know you can't worship without music. There's no religion on the face of the earth that doesn't have music because it was designed for worship. Now, so we had this music thing going on and this image thing going on, and everybody's about to bow down, but they, and, and something happened. It was somebody who said no. Let's read, let's start at verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar, well, let's start at 13. Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king because they didn't do what? They didn't bow down. They didn't bow down. They did not compromise their belief in God just because the powers that be had another plan. He said, thou shalt not bow down before them or serve them. I am a jealous God. Remember that commandment? 14 says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true? Because he liked these guys. O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye, what? Serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Verse 13, 15 says, look now. See, they're going to give you a space. There's going to be some grace. Now, if you be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the what? Cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. He said, hey. Now, I know you've been talking this stuff about this Jesus fella and how to worship him and how to keep his commandment. I know you've been doing it, but I'm going to give you one more chance to compromise. Peter? They did it to Peter, didn't they? Now, they're going to do it to you, too. They're going to say, now, look, I know you've been, you know, they'll bring you over, to, especially if they like you, they'll bring you over to the side and say, now, look, no, you know, I know your folks want you to do that. 
You know, I know the church members want you to do that, but you know, it's just me and you now. You know, we can make all this go away. We can make it go away. You just, just come on, this one little dance. Come on, man, it's nice music. You even know a guy playing the flute, don't you? They're gonna do that. And they said, well, but what happened next? But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Oh, y'all going, we are going to hear this literally in our ears, people. We're going to hear these words because it's all about worship and the devil has not changed. Your God going to deliver you out of my hands because that's all you talk about is your God. You're going to hear it, people. Let's see how, what the brothers did. They'd already had this conversation. Why? Because they had, a, they had forged a relationship with God through obedience, even back in chapter 1. We will not eat the king's meat, will we? Be they had already formed that relationship through obedience. That relationship is only established through obedience. That soul-saving relationship only comes with obedience. Only comes with obedience. It didn't come any other way. You can't come from the left, left side or the right side. It comes through obedience. That's why Christ said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. And we're going to try to be a non-commandment people who are going to need a commanding God's help. It's not going to work. Now, we know what happened, don't we? Amen. Verse uh, uh, seven, 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you. They answered thee in this matter. Why weren't they careful? They had tried God. They said, I'm not going to fear anything you can do to me. I don't want to offend my God. They had history of obedience. Now let's keep going. Verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Now stop there. Because we got some sure kind of strange ways that we want to put on God. Well, God, don't deliver me this way. That wasn't God. Or well, God, I want you to deliver me exactly this way that I will know and trust you. These brothers that were so fast, far past that junior high religion, they said, if he wants to deliver us, fine. He said, from the, uh, he said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if, it, if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. He said, it's not even a conversation because I've already tried him. I've already walked with him. He's already blessed me. He already strengthened me. He already, he, I already know him. He knows me. It doesn't matter what you say. King, you are insignificant. Do we have that kind of faith yet? Because if we're not, when the, when, the, when the decree goes forth, we're going to fold. Do you think all the Jews in this kingdom did what these brothers did? No. no. They, they were there bowing down and worshiping. You think all the church members are going to be able to stand? I'm looking for one. I'm trying to get there today. And my soul longs for those who think they're going to make it. And they can't even make it to church. Really? We believe that, don't we? Oh, it's going to be all right. You know, you know God is going to give me the strength. God ain't passing our strength for those who don't even know what position to be in. You don't even know what a strength story is. You didn't exercise it. Go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. Let's wake up, people. Something's got you beat down. All of us. Some of us aren't here because Pharaoh wore us out this week. Oh, I just I ain't got, I just. Really? That's a job. What about the whip? Why don't you go back about 300 years and ask people about going to work? Oh, I'm tired. Well, they would get hit with a whip, and they still had to go to work. 
Amen? Amen. See, they couldn't go down and, 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 and press charges. Well, I've been treating unfairly at the job. They're working me too hard. Pow! We're some soft folks, people. And we give all our strength to the devil. It's all right. Matthew chapter 2, that's all right. Matthew chapter 2, verse 12. Now, all this was going down, right? They were going to kill two and unders. But in verse 12 of chapter 2, you're going to see something that's really amazing. And this was Joseph. Uh, 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 and God was speaking to Joseph. He said, And being warned of God in a dream, that they should not return to Herod, but departed unto their own country another way. Now, that was the who? That was the wise men, right? Now, now, but let's keep going. Yeah. And verse 13, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to who? Now, who was Joseph? Mary's husband. In a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and do what? Flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to do what? Destroy, Destroy him. Now, Joseph already had a previous relationship with God. Chapter 1 of Matthew. Let's prove that. Amen? Let's see what happened in chapter 1. Verse 20. Now, you know Joseph. We know the whole story. Mary was with child, and Joseph had nothing to do with it. And that could be a problem. <laughs> and Joseph was a good man, though. No. Joseph said, look, you know, I don't want to put a reputation out there. You know, I don't want to, you know, she might, uh, so he had a heart to do the right thing. But verse, we're in chapter 1 and verse 19 says, And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Verse 20 says, But while he thought on these things, behold what happened. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. So guess what? Joseph was in a lineage too, wasn't he? He had heard what position to take. He had been and had a history of knowing God. He said, son of, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, you know Joseph had to know something about this because that wouldn't have made any sense to somebody who hadn't heard about this before. Yeah. Somebody come and tell you that. Yeah, go ahead. You're, you're a girlfriend. How would that work out? But this Joseph was already in the mindset because he had heard about him. He had tried him. And verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name what? Jesus. Jesus. Did he call his name Jesus? Yes. Joseph did name the child Jesus, didn't he? Yes. Okay, so see what's happening? That relationship of obedience is being forged. And he said, He called his name Jesus, and he shall save his people. From where? From their sins. Now all of this was done that might be fulfilled, which was uh, writ spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being in, in, inter interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him, what? Yes. His wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Obedience. This happened before the death decree. So you now, Joseph knew the angel, the voice of the angel of the Lord, didn't he? Why? Because he'd been there already. He had trusted already. He had obeyed already. And so guess what God does for those who obey? They give us the heads up, doesn't he? He said, look, now go to Egypt now. Egypt, oh no, Egypt, ooh, bad, Egypt. God, you hate Egypt. <coughs> go to Egypt. Joseph didn't question it. He said, oh, okay, time to go. We're going to Egypt. And he said, stay in Egypt. Until when? Until I tell you to come back. And did he tell him to come back? Yeah. He said, hey, y'all, Herod's dead. Those who seek his life is gone. You're going back, going back home. It would have never happened 
if Joseph hadn't forged that relationship through obedience. Amen. When we miss out on the whispers of God is because we have refused the whispers of God. Remember in 1 Samuel, what does 1 Samuel 15, 22 say? Sir, we're going to be doing a minute. Don't worry about it. 1 Samuel 15, 22. God is so interested in this. He is begging this. He's asking us this. He said in, in verse 22 of 1 Samuel 15. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. It's going to be too late to tithe and offer in that day. See, God asked you to do that earlier. Do you know that the whole tithing and offering thing is the obeying trust thing? We really think God needs his, our money. We combined don't have enough money. If we combine all of our yearly paychecks, it ain't enough money to make a dent in nothing, is it? But when we combine it with the power of God, what do you say, you math nerd? It's not just multiplying, it's exponential multiplying. See, when we don't trust him enough even to do that, how are we going to trust the instructions of God when the decree goes forth? Oh, but when a decree goes forth, like I said, church going to be filled, people going to be come throwing money at the stage. <laughs> and it's going to be too late. Oh, I was holding on. I, I'm, I'm going to give it to the Lord now. Wink, wink. You're going to buy Jesus. You're going to be like them brothers in the book of Acts. He said, I hope you perish with your money. First Samuel. He said, does he have a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is what? Better than sacrifice. And to hearken than that of what? He said, look, man, I need us. He needs his people to obey now. And obey in the small things. Don't try to obey this big giant thing yet. Obey in the small things. We have little things in our lives every day that we can choose to follow God, isn't it? He gives us these opportunities. Don't See, we're always trying to say, well, I'm going to get this big one. How about the little ones? What about the little ones? The little things. Name one little thing that we have been disobedient in. Diet. I didn't say it. See, if I'd have said it, y'all been mad at me. <laughs> That's a little thing. God said, you know, you might want to put that Mountain Dew down. And it's so funny that some European countries have banned Mountain Dew because it's so awful. It's killing people left and right. But, you know, we, we get, you know, gallons. What about that? If God says, you shouldn't really eat that stuff. <laughs> Well, Lord, you know, you're going to have mercy on me when I'm 50. Anybody been to the hospital lately? I saw this little sign that says, uh, if you think eating healthy is expensive, have you, have you tried to see the price of cancer lately? Heart disease. That's a little thing, people. We can't stop that. How are we going to stand up? in front of the authorities and say, I'm not going to bow down and worship. God gives us these opportunities. Yes, Revelation chapter 14. I said, oh, Brother Shaw, you said that's the last scripture. No, I didn't. We're going to close to it. Yeah, Brother Michael told me never to say that. <laughs> he said, I don't say that. That ain't the last scripture because you get the kids' hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> He said, you don't know what the Lord is going to tell you to do, so don't say that. Revelation chapter 14. There's another decree made. <clears throat> Here's a decree you really should, we all should be concerned about. Revelation 14. And guess, and it's somebody different making this decree. It's not the powers that be. It's the power, period, <laughs> who makes this decree. Verse 9, 14 of Revelation says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, 
which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of who? Amen. And the smoke of their torment ascended, ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day or no night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Who made that decree? God. That's a little different than Nebuchadnezzar, isn't it? That's a little different than Haman and Azarias. That's a little different from Herod. This is God. God said, if you worship that, you are going to leave this place forever. Eternal death is what I have in store for those who worship a strange God. Do we believe God means that? We really believe God means that? So why are we out here worshiping it? Why do we have in our foreheads the rules of the image beast? Why do we take our right hand, which symbolizes our strength, and use it for the kingdom of Satan, if we believe that God said don't do that? See, this is real. This ain't abstract. This is not stuff you can talk about in church and it don't affect you in your real life. This is every day of your life stuff. God said, I gave this decree. What are you going to do? We need to be starting getting in position to receive the miracle working power of God, which comes only through obedience. We all right with that? Be sure. Now, first John. First John. First John. I know. It's, I got things to do today. First John. First John chapter two. Macy's ain't going to save you, people. Playoffs not going to save you, people. While we all watching all of this stuff going on, we missing what's really going on. Why do you think it's so important that they have as many distractions as possible in front of us so we'll never believe until they close the door? Then everybody going to believe. When you hear that, you know, that do -do, you ever been in jail before? When you hear that, 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 that cell door close, oh, it's real then, ain't it? Yeah, everybody bad till they close the door. <laughs> Even in the courtroom, yeah, judge, you know, judge, you know, it like, oh. When you hear the click, click, it gets real. <laughs> well, it's about to go click, click, and there's nothing you'll be able to do. But First John chapter 2, verse 3, it says, and hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a what? Liar. And the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in who? Pretty simple, isn't it? You can say anything you want to, but when it gets real, we're going to know. See, God already knows. And he's, that's why he told you today, you can stop fooling yourself and try to find a fool to everybody else. It's time to get real with me. We talked about Wednesday night. Don't have God on, have God in. He needs to be inside. Don't just put God on like he's a coat because then you can take it off when you don't feel like wearing God. God must be inside. He must dwell in you. You must hope in him. And if we get this point, even today, it's not too late. Even today. Even if you've been fumbling around 20 years playing Christian, it's not too late. As long as you have breath, there is hope. Amen? As long as you have a willing spirit, there's a chance that God can deliver you. God is a delivering God. And we're going to need deliverance from evil. We're going to need deliverance from decrees, but we can't get delivered from decrees until we get delivered from evil. And those thoughts that we want to cherish and hold on to. We want to still listen. We want to still watch. We want to still eat. We want to steal all those things the devil's trying to use to kill us. We got to get the victory over that first. And we can get it. That's what's beautiful about it. 
Talk to somebody who's gotten the victory. Stop hanging around those haters that don't know anything about Jesus. Oh, Jesus ain't done nothing for me. I went to church last week and I prayed. I ain't been to church in seven months and want God to deliver. And, and you, know, you know how it is. Well, you know, I check in with God, but you know, you know, I do my thing and God does his. I've heard this before. Well, God understand my heart. You know, I'm a really good person. So far away from the goodness of God, they couldn't find it with a satellite. We can't be like that anymore. We know too much, don't we? Hadn't God blessed us with a little knowledge about how to, how to worship him? In spirit and truth. All right, that's that word of prayer. Our Father and our God, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You've given us your word so we can read about them and their experiences. You're the God of Esther, of Mordecai. We read about them this morning. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We read about them this morning. You are their God. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to be your children. We thank you for sharing with us the experiences of your servants so we may learn and obey and understand your way. Father, put that willingness in our heart this morning. Father, we have erred, we have sinned, we have gone astray, Lord, but you said if we would ask for forgiveness, you would forgive us, and we believe that. That's why we're on our knees today. Forgive us for our error. Forgive us for our presumption. Forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us for sinning against the Most High, thinking we know more than you. And Lord, we ask today that you would help us. Father, the decree has gone forth, and we're not ready. Father, help us. Have mercy upon us. Give us strength, Lord. Lord, we well, brought us this far. You said you were the author and the finisher. We ask that you finish this work you've started in our hearts today, that we may show that we may glow, Father, with that heavenly glow, so others may have a chance as well. For they don't know you, Father. Help us to show them you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.